during this virtual Makart lesson, we are going to be taking a little field trip to wherever your imagination would like to go. And we are going to capture the view through our window. So in order to do this, we need a small sheet of watercolor paper. I have an oil pastel. I have my eraser, sketching pencil, a black colored pencil. I have my watercolor set. I have a medium sized round headed paintbrush here. This is a size 12. I also have a very, very fine paintbrush here for adding some details a little bit later on. And I have some white acrylic paint on a small sheet of paper for adding some dazzling highlights at the end. And I also have some water pots for mixing colors and cleaning brushes as well. Now you do not have to do this onto watercolor paper if you don't want to. You're welcome to use a dry medium and just follow through the colors and the sketch. Now before I start creating this masterpiece, I am going to use tape to secure my paper to the table for good reason. When we use watercolors and we soak the paper, the paper expands and as it dries, it contracts and pulls back in again. And that's how we get that wobbly surface, which is pretty challenging to paint on. So if we tape our paper down, it will stay nice and flat. Then you can remove your tape at the end like I have done here and we end up with a lovely white border. Now, before we start this masterpiece, take a minute to yourself, close your eyes and imagine where you would like to go. If you could go anywhere in the world, think of your perfect day. Where would you go? What would you do? What would be there? That is what we are going to capture through your window. I've taken myself to the beach. I'm excited to see where you guys go. Now, before we start, just make sure that your paper is secured, your watercolor paper, if you are doing watercolor. If you're doing a dry medium, you don't need to worry about taping it down. Now, before I can start my view through a window, I need a window. So I'm going to start with a nice big rectangle. I'm freehanding mine. You can use a ruler, nothing wrong with that. Nice big rectangle. Now I am planning on doing watercolor. So what I really need to do is tickle the paper as lightly as I can. I'm actually pressing a little bit harder just so you can see the lines here. You want to be really delicate and light with yours. Now the type of window that I'm imagining is like one of those French windows with the small window panes. That's what I have in um, my house and I want to do the same here. So I'm going to do a couple little markers evenly spaced apart, does not have to be perfect. So one here and one here, same down below. Again, does not have to be perfect. And then very lightly, I'm gonna join those. It's a very loose, light sketch. Doesn't have to be perfect at all. There we go. So that is a very basic window for me. Now, my little window panes aren't just going to be lines. They're going to be little thick rims going around the glass pane. So I'm going to do another line running parallel underneath here like that. That's going to be one. And then I need to do the same going down. Do the best you can to keep them roughly the same thickness. And I think I would like to do some curtains hanging down as well. So coming up here, up high, I'm going to do just a little bit of a wobbly line coming down and the same on this side. So I'm looking out through the curtains, through the window. Now using my eraser, I'm gonna take out the window that you can see through the curtain. You would not be able to see through that part there. And where my bars cross, I also want to take that out. There we go. So lean back and make sure you've got all the right pieces in there. Beautiful. Now I am going to use an oil pastel to create some nice bright white bars for my window. If you do not have an oil pastel, you could also use just a normal wax crayon. That would work just as well. You could also just leave it white and do the best you can to work around the window pane. You could even paint straight over it and use acrylic paint over the top at the end to put in your window pane. Lots of different options. I'm just showing you one. 
So here is my white oil pastel. Now this is gonna be a little tricky because you can't see it. It's a white oil pastel on white paper. So you just have to kind of remember where you've put it. So I'm gonna start at the top here and I'm gonna go along. Now this is working really well. Do you see how it's gently pulling my pencil in? And it's creating a little bit of a gray streak going through it. I like that a lot. It makes my window look even more realistic, like a little bit of shadow going along there. I like that. So just gently going along, making sure I'm being super thorough back and forth. I don't want any little white gaps peeking through. I'm going to repeat this on every single bar of my window. done so I have a lovely little bit of shadow on my window as well that's been sealed in with the oil pastel I love that okay now it is time to switch on those imaginations what are you looking at through your window where would you like to go now personally I miss the beach I want to go to the beach so I'm gonna do a beautiful beach scene through my window in fact I'm going to do my perfect day at the beach so first of all, I'm gonna come down a little bit and I'm gonna do a line going across, all the way across my window. That is my horizon line, my sky, this is my ocean. Then down here, I'm gonna do a wobbly line. Yep, this is where my ocean is crashing onto the beach there. I like that. Now down here, this is the sand and in the sand, I am going to do a sandcastle. So over here to the side, I'm going to have my little sandcastle here that I've been building on the beach. That's what me and my children love to do when we go to the beach. It's going to have a little flag sticking out of it. Take your time. Your imagination can take you anywhere. You don't have to do a beach. Where would you go? What would you do? Perhaps you'd like to go to the mountains. Perhaps it's snowing where you are. You could have a snowman waving at you from outside. And I'm gonna do this little rectangle here on the ground. Do you know what that is? That's my beach towel for a little bit of sunbathing. And then what else do I need when I go to the beach? Hmm. Oh, bucket and spade for building my sandcastle. Very important beach tools. Not gonna get far without that. So there is my bucket and my little shovel here take your time really have a think about your special day what would you do what would you take with you perhaps you have a picnic basket uh, maybe your dog is with you anything that you can think of so I've got my sandcastle my bucket and spade my towel what else oh maybe a couple of flip-flops here yep so my flip-flops are on the beach as well what else okay so when I go to the beach I always get an ice cream from the store that is right next to the beach. So I'm going to have in my sand my little ice cream sundae that's waiting for me on the beach next to my towel. So there's the pot with the scoops of ice cream, a little spoon sticking out, and I'm going to cover it in all sorts of magicalness later on. But right now I just want a very basic outline. And what else shall I do? Hmm, I know. Over here, I'm going to have a sneaky little seagull 
Yep, here he is. What's he staring at? My ice cream sundae. Yep. They're everywhere. Whenever you go to the beach, there's always a couple seagull seagulls keeping an eye on what you've got. There we are. So I have a seagull watching my ice cream sundae. I like that. I'm staring out the window at my beautiful beach scene. I can add things as I go along as well. But for now, I'm ready to get some color on here. Take your time with yours and make sure you are happy with what you've got, no matter what you've decided to do. I have so many ideas running through my head. I could do a beautiful lake with mountains around the outside. I really do love the idea of having snow with a little Mr. Frosty waving at me. There's so many different things. Really enjoy this process and maybe do a couple of windows. See what you can come up with. Now I'm ready to start getting some watercolor on here. Now, if you're doing pencil color or a different medium, you can absolutely follow the same steps. I'm just gonna go through the different ways I'm applying color. So, what I have here, they're ever so slightly out of the screen, but I'm gonna show you. I have two pots of water. One for doing the first rinse of my dirty paintbrush, and another one for doing a quick rinse to make sure there's no dirty paint water in there. Fabulous trick for watercolor artists. St stops us from dragging dirty paint water over to our work. So what I'm going to do, wet my brush. I'm gonna to go to a nice bright blue here. My sky is going to be a fabulous bright blue. Quite looking forward to getting that on there. Now we have done oil pastel. So what's going to happen when I dig, take my brush over is the water in my watercolor is gonna repel the oil. It's gonna slide straight over the top. So here we go. Running my brush along, you see that? and my window comes forward. Wonderful. Now I want a nice bright blue sky. Doesn't matter how much I lay that paint on top of that window, it will not stick because of the oil. It's created like a protective sealant there. As I come down, I'm just gonna let my paint just drift back into the white of the paper again. So my sky is a little bit darker at the top there. So I have a lovely, beautiful, bright day at the beach. You can make yours darker along the top. With watercolors, a really good trick is, well not trick, a good tip, don't overdo it. Once you've got your color on there, leave it alone. The more we drag our brush through, we start picking up color, we start moving it around, and we often lose that beautiful flat surface that we've created. So I'm gonna leave mine just like that, and I'm gonna drop down to my ocean next. So my ocean, I'm thinking like a lovely teal green for my ocean. So I'm playing with a few different greens here that I plan on adding some blue into as well. Tip of my paintbrush facing my ocean top there. Ooh, I like that a lot. Lovely. I'm gonna add some blue through as well. Right the way up to my window. Super. And on this side, and again, as that comes down, it's gonna gently fade into my surf line and kind of disappear. So I'm using just a little bit of water to gently haze that out as it comes down. I've gone over my flag, doesn't matter. That's why we do our outside and background first. There we are, very, very green. So let's get some blue over there as well. Same again, just sweeping over. Oh, that's glorious. Oh, I could run and jump in that ocean right now. There we go, same again, drifting down. Wonderful. You can see my paper's trying really hard. It's warping, it's stretching out. As it dries, it's gonna want to crinkle up, but it cannot because I taped it down. Very important step. Only if you're doing a wet medium though. There we go, and I'm just gonna let that dry. I've got my sky and I've got my ocean ready for the sand. So cleaning my brush, going into my rinsing water to make sure there's no blue in there. And I'm gonna use this lovely ochre color here. Loosen that up, a little bit of ochre. Now I've got to be careful because I know my ocean is wet and if I take my ochre right up into my ocean, they're gonna bleed together and I don't want that. I don't want a blurry line. So I'm being careful to stay away from that area for now. And I'm gonna work all down 
in my beach here. A little bit of water to help spread that about. I'm doing the best I can to avoid the features that I have down in my sand. If I do go over them though, it really doesn't matter. I can pick them out with color a little bit later on when it's dried. You have lots of patience with watercolors. You really have to let it dry before you build up too much. There we are, just using a little bit of water to move this around. So I'm getting some darker pockets and lighter pockets. Tickling through all the features on the beach using just the tip of my paintbrush. Doesn't matter if you touch the window frame because obviously that's not going to go anywhere. It's oil pastel. My lovely sandcastle. And again, just a little bit of water to move around the color that I've added. Now, the watercolor can only travel to where you add your water. So it will continue to move and bleed and run across your page, just creep its way over, but only where you have added the water. So you are in absolute control of where this is going. Lovely. Oh, I'm liking that. Oh, my mind is traveling to the beach right now. That's wonderful. Now, whilst it's still wet, I'm actually going to go ahead and add a little bit of this raw umber, this darker color here, for just a little bit of shadow underneath my little seagull here. Maybe a little bit running next to my beach towel. Tiny bit under my flip-flops. My bucket and spade, just a little bit of shadow under there. And then perhaps, you know, just a little bit of stippling on my sand castle. Just so I have a couple different tones of sand in there so it's not all totally flat. I can also take this right up next to my water just a little bit, tickling my brush through my surf line there. Now as it starts to bleed out, it actually looks, whether the sand is a little bit darker along there, it starts to look like wet sand a little bit where the water's gone out and left that damp trail behind there. There we go. Lovely. Tiny bit of shadow under my ice cream sundae as well. There we are guys. So far, well done. You've done beautiful work. Now, I've done watercolor, so I've got to be patient. I've got to let this dry for a second before I do anything else over the top because my colors will just bleed and they'll run into one another. If you haven't done watercolor, if you've done a dry medium, you can carry on adding colors and pulling features out, but I'm going to take a little break and let this dry before I start adding details over the top. So I'm going to see you in about five minutes. Okay guys, I am back. Now my um, beach is still a little bit wet, but what I'm gonna do is add some fun color to my curtains and I want it to be super bright and bubbly and fun. I'm looking out uh, through my window to see this glorious beach scene. So I want a nice bright color. I'm gonna do red for my curtains. Even though I don't have red curtains, I don't care. I want it to look lovely and bright. So I'm going to pick a nice bright rosy red over here. You can do whatever you want for yours. Maybe you want a pattern on your curtains. Do whatever you want. And I'm going to just gently run my brush down, all the way down, like that. Now your curtains are gonna have like kind of creases and rolls in them. So I'm gonna do some different streaks of red. This is a very light base. So I'm gonna just pick up a lot more red here. And I'm just going to do some brighter streaks going up and down all the way from top to bottom there. Lovely. Going to let that dry for a second while I do the other side. So as it dries and I'm able to get more and more coats on, it's going to get brighter and brighter. I'll still have some faint areas of red because it makes it look as though the curtain is a bit textured. But you can see how I'm just going up over onto the tape. Doesn't matter at all. It's created a lovely protective surface there. There we are. I'm going to let that dry and then I'll add another coat over the top to make it even brighter. Now, whilst that's drying, I'm going to start jumping into my features and adding some details. Now, I'm going to use my big brush to do my larger areas like my towel. And then I'm going to switch to a really small brush to start adding some details to my little bits and pieces in here. It's 
raining really hard now. Can you hear that tippity tap in the background? It's actually quite nice. So what I'm going to do, let's have a think. What kind of a towel do I want? Hmm. I'm thinking a pink and white stripy towel. Yep. I like that. So I'm going to go into my bright pink here. Lovely and bright. And a little bit of water to help loosen it up some more. Now I'm going to just follow through my towel here with some lovely little stripes. Using just the tip of my brush. Now I'm stopping at the window pane here, but realistically I could technically just run straight over it because it does have that oil pastel on there but I'm just carefully going around this time. Right the way up to the edge of my towel. That's lovely. Remember, the watercolor can only go where you put it. You are in control. Beautiful. There's my little stripy towel on the beach. Wonderful. Now I'm going to use, hmm, I think a green. I don't have any green on here. I'm gonna do a bright green bucket sitting on the beach. My bucket and spade is actually red, but I think green would suit this better. So I'm going to do a nice bright green. Oh, that's just beautiful. Make sure your background has dried. If you're doing watercolor and it hasn't dried, then your bucket's going to start drifting away and blending into your background. We don't want that. And I think I'm going to do a little green shovel to match. There we go. What else do I have here? A pair of flip flops. You know, I think I might actually do some purple flip-flops. So a little bit of purple on here. One, the shape of my foot. And two, I can add the details over the top there. Lovely. Now the little tub that my ice cream is in, what color shall I do that? Hmm. I think yellow. I'm going to do a nice bright yellow for that. Very similar to my sand, but I'm going to add some details over the top when it dries to get it to stand out. So I'm doing a nice bright yellow tub there. Lovely. And my little seagull is going to have lots of details, but first of all, I want a little bit of gray. So I'm taking a little bit of my black and white together. I mix straight on top of my watercolors. A little bit of gray and I'm going to add that down through his wing like that. I'll add some more detail to him later on when he dries. Okay so I've got to be careful and stay away from those areas and allow them to dry before I go in with a little more detail. With watercolors you're constantly cycling around to new areas, waiting for areas to dry, moving back to a different area, that's exactly what I'm doing so I don't end up with bleeding colors. Do you see how my curtains have faded as they've dried? So now I'm gonna go back in with even more red and do some lovely bright red streaks going up my curtains. So here we go. There we are, following up and down. Nice and bright. Oh, that's looking lovely. That's really standing out now. I'm going to do the same on the other one too. My paper's getting a little crinkly where it's warping a little bit from the water. You can see how important it is that we tape it down. Because if I was allowing it to crinkle up, it would be very difficult to carry on adding layers of colour like this. There we go. Now I'm going to switch up to my small paintbrush now. My teeny brush. Look at this. A tiny brush. 
for getting some really fun details on here. Now we've all got something different, whether you've done exactly the same as me or you're staring at a completely different view. If you are fabulous, have fun. What I'm going to do is start adding some really fine details on the area that's dried. So the only advice I need to give you here is make sure you clean your brush super thoroughly before switching colors so you're not contaminating your new color with your old color. And make sure you're not working a wet paint on top of a wet surface because the color will bleed out. So here we go. I'm going to start adding some really fun shadows and details to everything down here on my beach. There we go. Now I've got to let everything on my beach dry for a second. It's really coming to life. I can imagine just opening my door and walking out into the sand. Wouldn't that be amazing? Okay, so I'm actually going to add a little bit of a darker red through my curtain now to show kind of the folds in the fabric. Now it's dried up a little bit. So I'm actually just tickling my brush over a few different reds here. Not super worried which ones. There we go drag a bit of purple in there too. Just throw a few slightly darker creases in there.
Now, whilst I'm waiting for everything to dry, what I'm going to do is go in with a black pencil color here to add a little bit more shadow to the lower sections of my window bars here and also to help me straighten up some of these lines. So on the very top, it's going to be a little bit lighter. So I'm doing just a nice single line to help straighten it up. There we go. All the way along. And then on the lower section along here, I'm actually going to run my pencil back and forth and as I come up into the bar, take off the pressure so it starts to blend into a grey so it looks a little shadowy. Now I'm working on top of oil pastel so I'm actually picking up excess oil on the surface there so I've got to keep removing that from my pencil and I'm going to repeat that through all of my bars. And do you see how it's really straightening them up? Just getting a little bit of shadow underneath. You don't have to do this on yours if you do not want to. If you like yours the way that it is, then leave it. dry I can even use my pencil to go in and create a little bit of a sharp outline around some areas so here I'm gonna go down the side of my sandcastle and my ice cream sundae here looking delicious the bottom of my beach towel wherever you want to if you want to sharpen any lines using a black pencil gives us lots of control There's the handle on my bucket. Just create a little bit more definition to the outside of my shovel there. I'm going to do a tiny bit of shadow down one side of my ice cream sundae as well, I think. Lovely. My little seagull just darken his underbelly a little bit. There we go. Now I think in my sky, you can see where I've got a little spot of red here. What I'm going to do is include that in my work. So I've got one seagull here who's staring at my ice cream sundae. I'm going to give him some buddies that are flying in. They've also seen that ice cream sundae left unattended on the beach and they're coming in to check it out. So up here, I'm going to turn that little spot into an incoming seagull. There we are. There's one. Maybe I should do another one. You can have a little buddy coming in as well. There we go. Two little shadowy seagulls flying in for some ice cream sundae. Now you can just keep on adding into these. You can do whatever you want. Perhaps now I could even add a sailboat into my ocean or a pirate ship. I can do whatever I want. Now I'm still waiting for a couple areas to dry and whilst I wait I have here a small amount of paper with a little bit of white acrylic paint on there and I'm going to use my teeny brush here 
to add just a couple dazzling highlights in a few areas. That's if you want them at all. Now I'm going to do a few just down through my ocean here. So going back into my waves a little bit. I'm going to do just a couple of little speckles to show a little bit more detail in my water. Totally up to you what you want to brighten up. Perhaps you brought your water all the way down to your sand and you don't have any white along the front there. This is a perfect way to open that back up again. I'm just going in with a few fun details. It's funny, I'm painting the beach and I'm listening to it rain. There we go. It's raining very hard here now which is quite unusual for California. So just gently stippling along, leaving a little bit of white along my surf line there. You can also use white acrylic paint. If you didn't put your window in yet, you could even do white acrylic over the top and paint it straight over. Lots of different options for this piece of work. going to brighten up the back of my seagull a little bit here, back of his head. His little tail feathers bring them out a little bit more as well. There we are. A little bit of a highlight on my ice cream sundae and on the spoon. There we are. That looks delicious. I'm gonna do a tiny bit of white going down one side of my bucket here. So that looks a little bit shiny. Couple of white stipples on my sandcastle. Just a bit of fun detail. I like that. And a tiny little splash on my flag there. Now the last thing I want to do, again, just to straighten up an edge a little bit, and I had to wait for it to dry first. It is still a tiny bit wet, but it's dry enough. It's down the side of my curtains. You can see I've got a little bit of trim here between the white and the actual curtain itself, between the two. So I'm gonna go down with my pencil and just close that gap. And there we go, mine is complete. So this is where my imagination has decided to take me. I've gone to the beach. I would absolutely love to see where your imaginations have taken you and see what you're looking at through your window. So please share your work in the comments on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. And you can also upload your work through the student portal. I am super excited to see what creations you have all come up with. If you enjoyed this lesson, try having another go. Pick a different window, have a think about where you would like to go and create another masterpiece. You could even take it a step further. Perhaps you've got something sitting in your windowsill, maybe a plant, maybe a cat who's also staring out of the window. You can keep building into these masterpieces. Whatever you choose to do and wherever your imagination takes you, the most important thing is that you have fun.